Thank you for tuning in to the Practical Preservation Podcast. Please take a moment to visit our website, practicalpreservationservices.com, for additional information and tips to help you restore your historical home. If you've not done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud, and also like us on Facebook. Welcome to the Practical Preservation Podcast, hosted by Danielle and Jonathan Kepperling. Kepperling Preservation Services is a family-owned business based in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, dedicated to the preservation of our built architectural history for today's use as well as future generations. Our weekly podcast provides you with expert advice specific to the unique needs of renovating a historic home, educating by sharing our From the Trenches preservation knowledge and our guests' expertise, balancing modern needs while maintaining the historical significance, character, and beauty of your period home. Today on the Practical Preservation Podcast, we have uh, John Littner, is that, is that correct? That's correct? Okay, thank you, from uh, Building Preservation Services. Uh, thank you for joining me, uh, John. Well, thank you for having yeah. me. So tell me about your background. Uh, I don't know where you want to start, but I grew up in an old house that was built in 1813 to 1814 um, along the Brandywine River in Wilmington, Delaware. It was part of a Hagley Museum property. It was one of the original DuPont houses. And I guess that's where my appreciation for old houses began. Um, we only lived in one part of the house. It was originally a house built for eight families. Um, and we lived in a quarter of the house. Um, and honestly, when I grew up in the house, I wanted nothing to do with an old house. I had all these dreams when I went to college of building a 5,000 square foot McMansion. Mm -hmm. And everything kind of changed um, when I bought my first house in 1997. And um, I started hiring contractors to do work. And I realized that the quality of the work that they were doing could have been a little better. Um, so I ended up starting to take classes at my local community college and I took classes in carpentry, wiring, and plumbing, just so I can work on my own house and not have to rely on a contractor. Mm -hmm. um, so I really enjoyed working on my house, and I really started not enjoying working in the office. Um, I spent 10 years in the financial industry, and I ended up at the point where I would look out the window and I envied the guys cutting the grass because I felt like they had a little more freedom than I did when I was trapped in my office right. working 10, 12 hours a day. And I kind of got to the point where, you know, I decided I need to make a career change because mm -hmm. I just didn't want to die of a heart attack in, in, the, in the office yeah. environment. Yeah. So Yeah. And I, I, um, I was when I was thinking about preparing for the interview and thinking about what I knew about your background, I was thinking that's we have that similarity in common. I did grow up in a construction family and and but my formal education is in business. Okay. And so like I was thinking that, you know, we're, we had that that similarity in, in common. And I think sometimes that's helpful to have that outside perspective to 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 and you know a willingness to learn yeah. and 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 you know find find solutions to to problems so um how did you start your business you kind of just decided you wanted to to get out of the office well i decided i i, I had to make the career yeah. change um and at some point i got a subscription to the traditional building mm -hmm. magazine and I, I thought it was a little too advanced, or maybe it was um, Old House Journal. Oh, yeah. And I got a postcard in the mail in 2000. It was for the traditional building show down in Washington, D.C. And I figured, you know what? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go to this. We were there, too. <laughs> um, so I yeah. think that was in January or February of 2001. Yeah. yeah. And I sat in on some of the educational um, lectures in terms of they, they were talking about where to go to school how to get an education and restoration preservation mm -hmm. and um at that point i was sold um but that was 2001 and i honestly 
I didn't make the jump from the corporate environment until 2004 when I quit my job. And a friend of mine had a, um, or still has a chimney company Mm -hmm. in Delaware. So I went to work for him for a year because I didn't want to go from an office environment to a classroom environment. I kind of wanted some detox from the office environment and just kind of get a hands-on approach and just see what other contractors are doing. So I worked with the chimney company for a year. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was a great experience. And then I started, um, I went back to school. Originally, I was looking at Belmont Community College in Ohio. In Ohio, yeah. I've been there for a Preservation Trades Network. Okay. I I think I was there for my first one in 2005. Okay. And then the second one. That was. There was another one. 10 or 11. No, no, I think 10 was at Patty Stevens. So it might have been 11 or 12. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I didn't make it back. Yeah. Yeah. so I wanted to go there, and then I realized that there was a, another program at Harford Community College mm-hmm. in Bel Air, yeah. and I talked to the director there, and everything just worked out. I mean, it was convenient. I didn't have to sell my house. I didn't right. have to move. So I was able to go to school at um, Harford and Community Harvard, College. Yeah. Um, so. I, I, that was a great experience. The mm-hmm. director there and even the instructors were just outstanding. Yeah. Um, so I ended up doing that. Did, what did you What did you study there? Just the, their preservation. Their program. preservation program. Yeah. yeah. But I, I tried to take all their hands on mm-hmm. courses. I mean, it was really for an associate's degree, but I figured I already had my MBA. Right. I already had an undergraduate degree in finance. I, I really don't need to take like the gym classes, right. the health classes. Yeah, you so, just wanted to take the classes for the education. Right, yeah. right. And they kept bugging me like <laughs> years afterwards, like all you need are these four classes and you'll get your degree. And I'm like, I don't need it. I don't Thank need you. It. I, I'd rather be working on somebody's house. I'd rather be saving for history. I, I can look up an Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some of the um, ordinance work and some of like the the more intricate mm-hmm. legislative kind of stuff, I don't feel like I know enough about because it's not something that I've you know run into a okay. lot. So I've been thinking about taking some online classes, but yeah, I have no desire to get another yeah. associate's degree. Yeah. I have two of those yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. And I know I talked to him because I'm like, oh, this is great. He's Mm -hmm. even, he's close. I can go there. Um, But that didn't work out. I mean, I I think his program is a little less Mm hands-on. Yeah. I know they have a lot of hands-on classes Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to take some classes, but it was just, I can't be everywhere. Right, right, right. And that's a little bit far north, but I I was thinking online, although I do struggle with online classes, so I don't know what I'm going to do. No, I don't think so either. But but I, you know, for what I want to do. But yeah, I've struggled. I've taken a few online classes, and I just struggle with the motivation. I feel like I just need to like go out and do it. Like if I have to go to class, I will make sure I go. But if I have to, if I have to be online, you know, there's always something that you know. Especially if you don't have to be online at a certain time. If it's just like loosey goosey. <laughs> So you um, you took your classes and then you started, you went out and started the business? Um, I, I, honestly, I don't know what to do. Did you? Okay. Was on the stage. When I talked to people, it was like, oh, okay, you know, you can start working with us. We'll pay, it, you know, 12 bucks an hour. And I'm like, wait, I have a house. I have these bills. Right, and yeah. So the director of the program at Harper Community College, um, I'd worked with him over a summer, kind of as an internship. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was restoring windows down there. Yeah. And I told him, I'm like, look, I'm I'm willing to be your gopher. I I will work for free. Um, I just I want to learn what you're doing. I want to know how to do this. And within a week or two, he's like, I can't just let you do this for free. Um, initially he was just like buying lunch for me and giving me gas money. And then he's like, I I have to pay you something. And so I started working with him. So 
I spent a summer working with him. And then I kind of just jumped in with both feet. Um, he was getting calls in Delaware and he's like, I know this guy who can do your windows. And I mean, it was baptism by fire. <laughs> yeah. I think back to the yeah. first job that I took on. And that was back in 2007. And it was probably one of my most challenging jobs. And I had to rebuild sash from scratch. Right. Because there were no sash. Oh my goodness. In the yeah. And it's like basically I ended up taking an old sash apart and just kind of reproducing those parts. And it, it all worked out. Yeah. It wasn't the prettiest job, but I, it, it all worked out. So. We, when, when I'm talking to people about doing their own window restoration, I'm like, start in the back. Yeah. <laughs> if you start in the back, you'll be okay. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is repetitive. And once you kind of learn the steps, you can, you can right. then replicate it. So, so what, um, what drew you into preservation? You know what? I, I kind of kept going back to my old house. Mm -hmm. Even after I moved and bought my own house, I would just go to my old house, just walk around back there. And I, I always kind of kept an eye on it. Yeah. And basically, my family moved out in 1993. Mm -hmm. It was owned by um, the DuPont company. And then they ended up selling it. And it pretty much was neglected from 1993 on. Oh. And unfortunately, it was torn down two years ago. And, um, but I would just keep an eye on it. And it was just kind of, there was so much to appreciate about the old architecture, the workmanship. And you, even when you see some of the timbers being put together with the, the pins and the, the mortise and tenon joints and the amount of time and effort it took to put that together. Right. You, you look at the windows and you see the old wavy glass and yeah. you, you see the reflections and uh, to me that that character I mean it can't you, be replicated it can't be replicated no. and you know you look at a new house today and there's a reason that you don't see any exposed wood everything is wrapped right. in aluminum yeah. because when it rots <laughs> you don't see it rotting right. underneath <laughs> that aluminum and that's what I tell people it's yeah. like yeah, that's you exactly. don't see yeah. what I mean you yeah. go to Home Depot or Lowe's you pick up a two by six or a two by four if you leave that outside it's gonna rot it's gonna rot yeah. you, you pick it up in a month or even on the drive home sometimes it that straight two by four yeah. starts to twist and turn and bend and it looks like a noodle by the time yeah. you get it home yeah. so I yeah. mean the quality of materials mm -hmm. and you can't find that today yeah and 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 I, I think I think you're right the character the those those character defining features like the wavy glass and the the details that you don't get anymore yeah you know i mean if you have a uh window that is um a replacement window that doesn't that has the the muttons inside the glass yeah. like you don't even get that 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 texture and that detail of, on the windows you just get these flat right. flat plain flat panes of glass um so yeah I, I i definitely think that 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 um that is a, a, a very important part of the of the work that we do. Yeah. Um, so tell me tell me about about your business about building preservation services. Wow. Um, so anyhow, I pretty much started in two thousand eight. I mean, I had. Oh my goodness, that was really uh, a rough year. <laughs> so that's when I, I decided to go. Uh, yeah. 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 So I was working I mean, I think it was DPL building preservation yeah. services prior yeah. to that. So I really wanted to get into it with the whole approach of I want to do masonry, I want mm -hmm. to do full house yeah, restorations. Right. And then I realized I'm like, I'm one guy. I don't have any employees for me yeah. to take on some of this work by myself. It's hard. And it's, then you have to get some contractors, and that's yeah. a whole other level of complexity right. that yeah. Right. Yeah. So with windows, the beauty of doing windows is you can restore windows by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's nice to have a second set of hands mm -hmm. that can help because right. to hang a window by yourself, especially if it's a large window, um, can be really awkward. Yeah. I mean, we just did one project in, in Westchester and the upper sash, I think, weighed 46 pounds yeah. because somebody used quarter inch glass. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And I mean, this thing was a beast. Yeah. Yeah, so. we've we've I've I have been um I have been um 
uh, the helper on some of those <laughs> on some of those projects when Jonathan needs a needs an extra hand. You know, a curved window that's super heavy, oh, yeah. and yeah, it's it, it's um, so I, I definitely understand that. But yeah, most of most of the work beyond maybe taking out an install can be done can be done. You know, by yeah. one one person or or, or at least alone. Um, so you, where do you, what locations do you, do you serve? Um, I'm, once again, I'm working in Chester County okay. and I'm trying to hone in more on Chester County, but I still keep getting calls from Harrisburg. Um, but I really want to stay within 30 miles of West Grove, which is where my shop is. Um, but a lot of times that doesn't pan out. Right. But Originally, when I started, it was I was taking any job anywhere. Right. Sorry. Um, the um, yeah, I think that's hard, and it is nice for window restoration that you can take them out and then bring them back to the right. shop. So, like the distance isn't as hard, but if it's a large project, it still is. Oh yeah, it's still yeah. hard. Yeah. I mean, I've done projects down towards DC and Maryland, mm -hmm. and yeah. traveling back and forth is. It's difficult, it especially when you know you tell the client like, "Oh, by the way, you're gonna have to pay for my hotel, right. or you're gonna have to put me up for a few nights so I can work on your windows." Right. And oh, most of the time, they're they're pretty agreeable yeah. to that, but I it's don't an like, additional cost. Right. Though. It's an yeah. additional cost and it's an, an, an additional concern. Like, I don't want to spend time with my family. Or, right. So it just adds another level of complexity to it. Um, and that, I, I'd like to stay within an hour. I mean, yeah. I've looked at projects that were like, I really want to do this, but you know, Gettysburg is two yeah. hours away. Oh, yeah. Or That's something. Far. So, yeah. 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 I, I agree. And, and when we get projects that far away, it, it is nice to be able to take work back to the shop. But yeah, then typically they do stay over, um, right. you know, just because it, it's, it's hard to drive back, do that drive back and forth too. So, so what, what drew you in? I know you talked about, you thought about doing like whole house restoration or what drew you into window restoration or preservation? Um, I think largely the fact that I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. There's a big demand for it. Mm -hmm. And once people found out that there was somebody in Delaware when I started in 2007 who was doing window work, the calls started coming in yeah. and I just kept thinking to myself, I don't need to get all this other equipment to do additional kind of work. Right. If I can will keep you busy. Yeah. And then right. so, yeah. So you're you're even specialized further down than just, you know, preservation in general is yeah. Yeah, more 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 specialized. Um what um challenges or trends do you see in, in preservation? Um I think one of the biggest challenges is just education. Mm -hmm. And when I say education, I mean that from getting people involved in terms of getting younger people yeah. just interested in taking a hands-on approach, learning about it. So it can be a career. Right. Um, I think, I, I don't feel like a lot of, I don't wanna say, I'm gonna call them kids because mm -hmm. right. I'm old enough to call them. <laughs> Somebody who's 20 and a kid. Um, I, I don't feel like a lot of high school kids are interested in. Right. And I don't think it's on. encouraged as much as it should be. Um, and I think for a long time, especially when I was in school, I think some of that has changed. But, you know, 20 some years ago when I was in high school, they were trying to encourage everybody to go to college. Oh, yeah. And it just, I, I, I am a firm believer that everybody needs some kind of post high school training. Right. Whether that's an apprenticeship, whether that's trade school, whether that's, I don't know, a community college, like you need something, something beyond high school. But I don't think that that was really encouraged that everybody just needs to get a four year degree, you know, get tons of student loan debt where, right. you know, you can get a, a good, uh, you know, if you if you put your time in when you're younger and, you know, make, work those $12 an hour, even though it's higher now, but, you know, work that when you don't have the responsibilities, you don't have, you know, I think that you can make a, a good life for yourself. Yeah. And that's just not talked about. And I'm not even sure, like, just how do students even have a program anymore in terms of 
what their hands-on programs are. Their their hand it's it's carpentry or for for woodwork it's carpentry or cabinetry. Those are the two, okay. but it's not it's mostly new construction focus. Okay. It's not. I know that the museum commission was working for a while with them to have a program to kind of supplement with window restoration okay. and and repair kind yeah. of things. But I, it wasn't part of their like main curriculum, and it was like an extra. And I just don't think that enough people were were doing it. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. yeah, and that's a struggle we have um, with retaining carpenters. So we get a carpenter that already has experience. Yeah, they don't really want to do like repair work. The Dutchman that right. you know, they just want to keep installing. Yeah, and so that's a struggle that we have. You know, with with we actually do better finding you know somebody that wants to kind of build it as a career, but then you know three or four years down the road, they've learned enough and they're ready to, to go on their way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the mentality now is let's just get it, get it done as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. And usually that means more damage to the woodwork. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it's I, I I think that that is a um, that is a a struggle, um, and I I agree with you. I think and I think education too for homeowners because right. I think that and that's something that we really try to 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 do. But people, you know, we we were chatting before we started recording about the you know the replacement window industry has a lot of marketing dollars. I mean, it oh, drives yeah. me crazy to watch daytime TV. Not right. that I watch it a lot, but you know, you get the Window Nation commercial, oh, yeah. and the, if your if your windows are cold, you need to replace them. And like, I'm like, glass yeah. isn't an insulator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're replacing windows. Yes. It's like, Hold on a second yeah. here. What what are you teaching people? Yeah. I mean, you're teaching people that everything's just everything is replaceable. Yeah. And yeah. you know, my mentality is that if you buy an old house and you you want to turn it into a new house, stay out of the old house. Right. Just buy a new house. <laughs> right. And don't butcher the yeah. old house. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I mean, it's a shame. I've seen so many old farmhouses that were restored. They put Anderson windows in. Or pellas, and yeah. the windowsill was rotting underneath because it was capped in aluminum or yeah. something. And yeah. I get these calls, and I'm like, I can't fix your window. I, I'm yeah, not, they're not repairable. Right. Yeah. Right. You can't repair it. And yeah. educating the homeowners—that's the second part of it. Yeah. The and those and those those replacement windows are not inexpensive. They're not the right. two hundred dollar vinyl windows. They're right. you know. It's, it's yeah. Like, yeah, fiberglass, yeah, or aluminum yeah. clad, or something like that. And people think, oh, it's maintenance free. Right, I yeah. don't ever have to paint it. <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as yeah. maintenance free. Right. No, You're no, just no. gonna have to replace it. That's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of times I think just talking to the homeowner and just having them realize the value of keeping the historical elements of their house or even keeping like walls intact or right. something like that. Because sometimes somebody will tell me, oh, I want to gut my house. I want to do this. I want to well, insulate the walls. And I'm yeah. like, think about what you want to do first, because even like I see a lot of brick houses that are painted. And oh, like, yeah. once you add that layer of latex paint on the outside, it's gonna of the just, brick, it just damages the brick. Right. It damages the brick. And now you're going to have moisture issues inside. So yeah. Um, no, definitely. And and you, we see that a lot in um, Philadelphia, um, Society Hill, because the the Philadelphia um, Historic Commission is very strict. Right. So the facades have to stay intact, but they gut the inside and make a brand new house. Right. We worked on a house in um, Delancey, and I think it was the only house on the block that was still original on, on the inside, and okay. they had owned the house since the 70s or okay. the 60s. Um, and um, so, yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's a different mentality, but and I know that the city can't really enforce that. They can only enforce the facades, but still it's like, you know, why do you want to come in and live in, you want to live in this neighborhood, but you want to, you know, have a new house on the inside. Right. So yeah, I, I, I think that that is an issue. So is there anything that you thought of um, while we were talking that maybe I didn't ask you or that you wanted to share? Um, well, still kind of going back to yeah. the, the last question you mm -hmm. asked some of the challenges. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, if I get a call and somebody says, well, just give me a ballpark price. 
and they're not willing to have me come out, mm -hmm. then I know that that person is just price shopping. Right. And they're probably just going to get their windows replaced yeah. because they're trying to justify to their spouse that it's going to be too expensive. It's going to be too yeah. expensive. But a lot of times, if I can get myself into the house and talk to the owner, just to, to convince them that their windows belong in the house, mm -hmm. because so often you'll see like an 1880s house and it still has its original two over two windows and yeah. all the other houses on the street have been replaced or either one over ones or the- Yeah, they the didn't even try to match, yeah. Right, put yeah. a six over six in there and it just looks wrong. Yeah. And just trying to get people to appreciate what they have mm -hmm. and just spending the time with them because yeah. you know if I spend a lot of time, I feel like I talk with mm -hmm. potential customers right. and I want to get them fired up about yeah. being excited about, about owning an old house. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And 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 the people that love their houses and it's not, I mean, it is always a financial decision, but it's not just a financial decision. Right are the people that I find are the best clients. Oh, yeah. um, not that, I mean, everybody has a budget, no matter how much money they have. Right. But it's, you know, spending it where, you know, spending it wisely. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if they don't want to make, if and, and we don't, you know, we typically, you know, we, we our best clients are homeowners, not, you know, not people, not, not that it's an investment property, right. not that it's a develop, because we get those calls too, because they're trying to get their tax credits or whatever, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're, 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 they're only focused on the bottom line. Yeah. They're not focused on what's best for the house. And it's, it's always nice when a homeowner has tried to mm -hmm. do the restoration work themselves, yeah. because then they actually realize the amount of time that yeah. goes into it, because too often, I think the misconception is, oh, you're just going to repair my window. This shouldn't cost more yeah. than a cheap vinyl replacement, right. video, which is not the case at no, all. No, it's not. But in the long run, for the lifespan of a replacement window, it's much less expensive. Oh yeah. Because these windows have been there for a hundred plus years. But you know, it's it's that it's it's thinking about it in the long term. You might not get the the whole value out of it, right. but somebody somebody will. Right, and that, that's yeah. what I always tell somebody. Yeah. I, I ask them, how long do you want to stay in your house? Yeah this is a project you have to do for yourself. Yeah. It's not something that you're going to do for the future homeowner. Yeah. You're going to have to seek the appreciation out of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I totally agree. And uh, um, yeah, and I think to educating um, homeowners on that the older windows can be as energy efficient oh, yeah. as, as a replacement window. Um, I think that that's something that often gets lost in the, in the replacement window right. marketing. Right. And now that there are engineering studies and, and different things that we can point to, it, it I think that helps the argument. Right. And yeah. typically, I like to start a project on the outside. If mm -hmm. somebody has a 50-year-old storm window, then that storm window right. is pretty much yeah. at the end of its useful yeah. life cycle. Yeah. And if you put an energy-efficient storm window in, restore the windows, put weather stripping in there, mm -hmm. you're almost at the same level as, as, a replacement a, window. as a replacement window yeah. and plus you have something that's going to last instead yeah. of having to be replaced in 15 years yeah. When the, the no, I, I, yeah i totally agree with you because we i actually just had a call maybe a month ago from somebody who they had no no storm windows on the outside right. and i'm like well my first step then would be put storm windows on like that's the first thing you can do the easiest thing you can do yeah. and then you know go from there because that's going to at least help you know protect the windows but also uh, if it's an exterior storm but also, you know, help with the, the air infiltration. Um, do you do you have a preference between exterior and interior storms? I prefer exterior storm mm -hmm. windows. We have been moving towards that direction for a while. We were doing all interior, but okay. we've we've started moving in that direction. Um, I think it makes sense from protecting the building, right? And also, you know, for ease of use. Like if you use your windows, the interior storms don't work as well because right. you have to take the whole panel off or you know do you know do a whole change yeah. out <laughs> and typically what i you want the storm mm -hmm. yeah. window yeah you don't want it the other way around because right. otherwise if you do have an interior storm window then your wooden window is protecting the storm window right so it it makes more sense to have it yeah. on the outside unless you have a museum or right. some historic building where you absolutely cannot alter the, the exterior, exterior yeah. appearance yeah and that's it but that and the storm windows i would argue is a change that could be reversed but yeah for a museum it makes right. sense to 
to, um, to have it on the, on the inside. So did, um, did you have any seminars or anything that you're, that you're doing, any offers? Okay. Yeah, I know. And I've done a couple seminars where I've been on, done them on Zoom. And I, I've decided I don't like that. I'm like talking to myself for half an hour and I get no feedback. Like when you're talking to other people, it's a lot easier to like gauge if they care. What you say. <laughs> when I'm just talking to myself in my office, it's not, it's not very much fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 No, I, yeah, I agree. I'm going to be up in April. Okay. Uh, we can definitely add that to the there, but I'm not sure what the attendance okay. is going to be limited to. Okay. So I know Historic Harrisburg is trying to promote that. Um, so that's going to be in April sometime. But aside from that, I mean, I, I enjoy doing the hands-on workshops because so, so many times it's like people don't even know, like, how do I get my window out? I want to be able to change the, the sash cord right. or, yeah. you know, simple things which, like uh, that. Which is a fairly easy fix that somebody could do in, right. in a couple hours, you know, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to get everything. Right. And after you're good at it, it's less than oh, that, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It can be intimidating for some people who've never done it. Mm -hmm. And it's, not, it's really not that hard. It's just, it's a lot of little steps yeah. that you have to take. In, into consideration, yeah. you have to do it in the right order. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, how can how can our listeners contact you? Um, you can go to my website, okay. buildingpreservationservices.com. I'm also on Facebook, Building Preservation Services there as well. Um, I don't know, can I give a phone number? Oh, sure. Here? Uh, my phone number is 302-983-4056. And email is buildingpreservationservices at gmail.com. Okay, very good. Well, and what I will do is I will make sure all of that contact information is on our website where, okay. the, web, where, the, where the podcast is. So then people, if they're listening and get, get a chance to write it down, they can always check that. Too. Okay. No, I appreciate okay. that. Yeah. I, I'm about as busy as I can be. I mean, this whole COVID pandemic has led a lot of people to and analyze and look at their own houses right. and with people stuck at home instead of going to the office they're spending more time looking at their windows so they want windows to work and they want the windows to look good so mm -hmm. i don't think i've ever been this busy oh well that's a blessing <laughs> yeah i know people ask me i went into woodcraft last week or the week before last to get a router bit for jonathan and um the guy I said, are you busy? I said, thankfully we are. And, you know, and, but he's like, I'm glad to hear that. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful that, you know, the pandemic hasn't, hasn't hit us. Right. So, yeah. Well, thank you very yeah, much for, you. for coming to, to do the recording and everything. I appreciate it. No, thank you. I, mean, I enjoy talking about it. And yeah. I hope the more people are just interested in restoring their windows and just having work done on their houses. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for listening to the Practical Preservation Podcast. The resources discussed during this episode are on our website at practicalpreservationservices.com forward slash podcast. If you received value from this episode and know someone else that will get value from it as well, please share it with them. Join us next week for another episode of the Practical Preservation Podcast. For more information on restoring your historic home, visit practicalpreservationservices.com.